Moscow International Automotive Salon, MIAS, is an important annual trading event for Russia and the European market. Car manufacturers from around the world try to be the focal point of MIAS so as to gain some headway into this potentially largest market in Europe. Russia's car market has developed rapidly in the last 10 years. In 2008, more than 2.7 million cars were sold, almost surpassing that of Germany, the largest automotive market in Europe. The growth was, however, halted by the financial tsunami and sales dropped by almost 50% last year. But car sales in Russia picked up again for the first seven months of 2010, with a 9% growth as compared to the same period of 2009. Today, the proportion of people owning cars in Russia is just half that of Europe, so there is great potential for growth. We expect uh, to be in the very near future, I would say, in the mid-future. Uh, we would expect to be among the, uh, within Audi, among the top five markets uh, in terms of the volume and about the, the profit we bring to the company. While foreign brands focused on promoting medium to high priced cars in the exhibition, local manufacturers were selling low priced cars below 20,000 US dollars. Despite the increase in sales and purchasing power of the Russian market, the sales and output of local brands have been dropping and they could only survive in the low end market. Competition, it's the way how it affects the culture in the company. It's important you know, for you know, you know, management to understand how Everyone in the company you know, could understand what's, what's our problem. While private cars were the main items in this exhibition, a Russian manufacturer displayed only a series of light commercial vehicles. Behind this is a story of the painful experiences of a Russian traditional industry. Nizhny Novgorod, known as Gorky during the Soviet era, is located 440 kilometers east of Moscow. With a population of over 1.2 million, it's the fifth largest city in Russia. With the River Volga, Russia's major river, flowing through the city, it's been an important communication and trading center in Russia for several centuries. Historically speaking, the city was an important car manufacturing base of Soviet Russia. The Gorky automobile plant, GAZ, was set up as a key car manufacturing base in 1929, when the Soviet Union implemented its first five-year plan. After the disintegration of the Soviet Union, GAZ was privatized and restructured. It merged with 17 production facilities in other regions and became Russia's largest car manufacturer. The plant here mainly produces light vehicles. Gaz's business was greatly affected during the financial tsunami. Output dropped drastically from 210,000 cars in 2007 to just 65,000 cars in 2009. To rescue the situation, Gaz appointed Bo Anderson, Vice President of America's General Motors Corporation, as its president in 2009, hoping that his experience with foreign car manufacturers could turn the company around. One of the elements in Russia is the perception is that Russian vehicles has worse quality than Western or Asian. So we focused a lot on quality at all levels. When the economy first started to open up in the 1990s, there was a great demand for low-priced van. There was also no direct competition from imported cars. So Gaz's business developed steadily. However, when the financial tsunami hit, the Volga sedan, which used to be a status symbol during the Soviet Union period, could no longer compete with imported cars, and Gaz had to stop its production in 2008. The light commercial vehicles were also badly hit by the economic downturn in 2008 and 2009. Under the planned economy of the Soviet regime, manufacturers had to comply with export volumes set by the government and also guarantee employment to provide a basic livelihood for the people. Quality of products and competitiveness were not major concerns. Anderson's priority was to change this traditional mentality and to raise efficiency and quality. So we've reduced twice as many indirect workers and twice as many managers as we did with the people doing the real work. We focus on the operator, and the rest of us are there to support the operator. He even reset the responsibilities of different posts and production goals. We started to work with problems, more aggressive. We need to do all the work to solve all the problems at the, pro at the place where this problem is situated. 
platform doubled their productivity. The cost saved from the labor cut was used to improve the function and quality of the original model, which entered the market as a new model. Instead of producing some of the spare parts of the new model, Gars decided to use imported spare parts which were more efficient. Yet the most important reform was to change the work culture that had been passed down over generations among the workers and the management. As a major enterprise in the city, many generations of families have worked in Gars. The workers' attitudes and traditional way of thinking were deeply rooted. And that's where we spend most of our time, and that's maybe the most difficult thing, because people said, in the past it used to be okay, now it's not okay anymore. As president of the group, Anderson visits the production plant daily to hold meetings with the supervisors. Everyone has to voice out their problems and discuss ways to solve them. Changing the work culture of getting paid, regardless of how much effort had been put into the work, greatly enhanced efficiency. Dimitri has been working with Gaz for more than 10 years. My duty is to ensure a good quality for the finished product. We have to identify the issues and resolve them before the product goes to the consumer. Otherwise, the competitors will squeeze us out of the market. Dimitri admitted that the plant uprooted lots of the traditional work habits and at first he had problems adjusting to the changes. People started to notice the changes. At first they were skeptical about them. Then they started to notice how things had changed for the better. As the largest enterprise in the city, Gaz employs 25,000 staff. Accounting for some 70% of the city's industrial output, its prosperity or decline has a direct impact on the livelihood of the people. I first heard about the plant when I was in primary school. We usually heard about it on TV. Many people who lived in the neighborhood worked at the plant. Team leader Dimitri's wife also works as an executive for Gaz. More than a year ago, when the company was in crisis, everyone in the city was very sad. Those who were laid off were offered additional vocational training, and they were continued being paid their average salary for a year. The one shift that was left just worked three to four days a week. They were paid, but their salary was cut. It seems that the worst situation is now over. The new light commercial vehicle models launched in 2009 have been well received by the market. With the improvement of the economic environment, sales have quickly gone up. According to forecast, sales in 2010 will increase by more than 25%, outperforming the general market. Although Gaz has stopped producing the Volga sedan, it has not abandoned the sedan market. In 2006, Gaz bought a basic sedan design from America's Chrysler to be redeveloped into a completely new model unlike previous Russian models. The idea was to compete with imported medium-priced cars. With this product, we have been able to prove that we have as good or better quality as both the Europeans and the Asians. Gaz even bought whole sets of production equipment from America and built new plants and production lines. With quality control as a top priority, it also imported the newest devices from Europe to set up a quality control system based on foreign standards. Even employees on the production lines were carefully selected. The aim was to completely get rid of the old working mentality. After two years of development, the new car went into production in 2008. However, its sales went down when the financial tsunami broke out. Although this car model has become outdated today and sales are unsatisfactory, the project reflects that a Russian car manufacturer could carry out reforms. Overnight, we were able to catch up 20 years uh, versus a normal Russian production to one of the best in the West. We got access to new manufacturing technologies and we are able to build this vehicle better and with better quality, better productivity than it was built uh, five years ago in the United States. 
To support the local car industry, the Russian government has set aside 10,000 million rubles or 340 million US dollars this year to subsidize owners of 10-year-old cars with 50,000 rubles each to buy new locally produced cars. The tax period on imported Finnish cars has also been extended to encourage foreign brands to manufacture their cars in Russia. However, the government stresses that these are temporary policies and that the most effective ways to improve efficiency is by opening up different markets and encouraging competition. Being uh, as open uh, as uh, possible uh, in the uh, global environment, this way uh, we'll be able to uh, create new value added uh, uh, in Russia and uh, uh, create new, more efficient jobs uh, in Russia while we will uh, restructure all companies all factories where we need to improve labor productivity and the number of jobs will uh, go down this time. The car industry is not the only industry that has to face reforms and challenges. Russian society understands that the traditional way of thinking can no longer survive competition and changes are necessary. We don't People have to understand and foresee that there will be more changes, whether for the better or for the worse. They have to bear this in mind. In reality, some traditional enterprises started to face international challenges very early. Nowadays, they look completely different.